Back with me, David Jolly, and joining now politics editor for TheRoot.com, Jason Johnson, and nationally syndicated columnist Connie Schultz. Connie, I'm going to start with you. Donald Trump went to Ohio because, uh, quite frankly, the Republican Party is a bit worried. There's a race there um, with a Republican who should be well ahead in Ohio's 12th congressional district. Uh, there's a guy named Troy Balderson who's running in that district against a Democrat named Danny O'Connor. And if you look at the polls there, it is neck and neck, except um, it should be like seven points for the Republican. What's going on in Ohio 12? Well, this has not been a competitive district in 25 years. So regardless of the outcome, I mean, that it's close now, I, I, it looks like Danny O'Connor could very well win this, but it's already a loss for the Republicans in that way, and they know it. Um, they're trying to, they think they're going to make a big statement about this if he indeed prevails, a Republican candidate, but they've already lost the argument, um, but, which is why he's there. And it was interesting to me that they had to, they moved the venue, you know, to a gymnasium, which was smaller, according to the reports I saw this morning, than the original place. They wanted to make sure there were no empty seats because Donald Trump hates that. And I'm glad you it, it very quickly acknowledged what's going on here with those attacks on LeBron James because it, it is racist. He went after a black athlete again. He went after a black uh, newsman. And then he went after Maxine Walters again. And in each case, he refers to their intelligence and mm -hmm. calls them, in, in different ways, calls them stupid or lower IQ'd. And uh, it's really important that we just, I think at this point, acknowledge that, that that's what the president is doing. Well, what is what is the commentary in your view, Connie? What is he saying about his own voters if he thinks that's a tactic that will get his base out? Well, I think he is appealing to a certain percentage of his base. Surely, I've decided that I am not going to take spend any of my energy mocking Trump supporters because this responsibility lays squarely with the president, and he is he is working them up. He is mobbing them up. He wants them to attack journalists. It's only a matter of time, as we saw from the tweet this morning. He wants to endanger the lives of journalists, and I hear the criticism from some. Oh, now you care, journalists, because you're the targeted population, and that's a fair a criticism. I think. I do want to suggest this, however, when the president is going after journalists, he is going after America because Americans should be able to count on journalists to hold government officials accountable and this president accountable, especially this president accountable. So there's more at stake simply than the safety of journalists in terms of their personal lives. But he is making this so personal and he is not listening to any of his critics, even in the White House, who are telling them you must stop calling journalists the enemy of the people. Yeah, it is interesting, Jason, that, uh, you know, uh, you know, Donald Trump tweets a good game, but when it comes to who he's willing to vocally attack, he will go after women. Obviously, he's gone after uh, Maxine Waters um, over and over and over again at these rallies. Uh, he didn't actually, though, mention LeBron James at that rally. So let me let me play a little clip of that rally um, in which he went after Republicans of a certain kind. Take a listen. How do you get 100 percent of anything? You know, you always have somebody. I don't like Trump. I don't like our president. He destroyed my career. I only destroyed a career because they said bad things about me and you fight back and they go down the tubes and that's okay. And sorry about that. I wanted to also play uh, Donald Trump going after Congresswoman Maxine Waters at that same rally. Take a listen. Oh, okay. Well, that's okay. Never mind. Um, let me just go to you on this, Jason, because what he didn't do is go after King James in his home state. Right, right. Well, because the president's also a coward, right? I mean, he, he attacks people that he thinks he can get away with only in safe environments. I, I'm down here at Netroots. There's a, there's a T-shirt I see a lot of people wearing that says, don't test the waters, right? Like, all this stuff that Trump is always saying about Maxine Waters, he would never say this to her in person. Right? He, he would never walk through Congress. That man's probably terrified of her. And the same thing applies to LeBron James. Now, I'm, not, I'm the last person. I used to live in Cleveland. I'm the last person to say that there aren't some racist white people who hate LeBron James uh, in the state of Ohio. But at the end of the day, the president very seldom has the strength to really go after the individuals who can fight back, to go after the individuals where there may be some boos in the crowd. So he's going to go after LeBron James through Twitter. But he's not going to run the risk of saying that in a crowd down there because, oh, hey, there may be some people who boo. There may be some people on LeBron James jerseys. That's just how this president operates. He's, he is a coward and he is a punk and he doesn't know how to truly confront people. And I'll also say this, and this is an important point. He'll go after LeBron, but he won't go after Greg Popovich. He'll go after Maxine Waters. He won't go after Steve Kerr. He won't go after Eminem. Right. He, he is deathly afraid of going after white people because that will expose how racist his attacks on black people really are. Yeah. And, and we do now have that uh, that attack of Donald Trump on Maxine Waters. Let's play that really quick. 
They're talking about this blue wave. I don't think so. I don't think so. Maxine Waters is leading the charge. Maxine. She's a real beauty. Maxine. A seriously low IQ person. Seriously. You know, I'll ask you the same question, um, David Jolly, that Donald Trump feels sure. quite free to go after a black woman, um, esteemed congresswoman from California, um, by name at his rallies and caused his audience to taunt her. But he did not uh, have the courage to renew his attacks on LeBron James in front of that same audience. What do you make of that? Well, to Jason's point, Donald Trump is a weak man with no courage, and so he would not attack LeBron James in front of a crowd in Ohio. But on the issue of race and Donald Trump's view of race and his manipulation of the social construct in the United States around race, you can draw a direct thread from his approach to the Central Park Five to his comments of Maxine Waters and his tweet about LeBron. And it is one of the most disheartening parts about today's Republican Party is that they cheer that on. Joy. I think one of the things we've learned from Donald Trump is in politics today, many Americans follow leaders rather than they follow policies, right? Many Republicans have been happy to abandon the policies they believed in the past 10 years to follow a leader like Donald Trump. There's no greater contrast to what Donald Trump had to say last night than to Barack Obama's 2004 speech where he talked about being one America, not being a black America, white America, conservative, uh, progressive, but one America. We have gotten so far away from that. And I think as Democrats continue to have a family conversation about their message in November in 2020, yes, policy Policies are important, but bring us somebody that can unite the country. And those medium information voters, those independent voters who are suffering from the anxiety that is Donald Trump, they will move to the blue column, and we will see that blue wave. And I'll go back to you on this, Connie, because at some point, does the fact that he does seem to single out uh, women, whether it is uh, Congresswoman Maxine Waters or, uh, or other women in politics, it, it, at some point, does that begin to erode his female, his white female base? I think what's eroding his female white base is the family separations. Um, we're seeing that somewhat in the polling. We're, I'm certainly seeing it even in my reader mail right now, that uh, it was the last straw for a lot of women because it involved children. Um, I do think it was interesting that um, the First Lady uh, made clear that she would like to visit LeBron's school. You know, nobody knows a marriage like the two people in it, and I'm just glad I'm not in it. I don't know what's going on there, but I do think that we have to pay close attention to the language that's coming out of this White House, and we have to rebut it at every turn. He's always hated women. We know that. There will always be men who hate women. Um, we've known that. I, I've, I've been a columnist since 2002. I've always gotten a certain percentage of angry male uh, from angry white men. My uh, husband always jokes, it's my gift. I draw it out of them. But there's not a single woman in America who writes her opinion for a living who isn't getting that kind of hate mail, regardless of her party affiliation. Some men just can't believe we get the real estate. Amen to that. Uh, my guests are going to all stick around. We're going to keep them all around. And coming up, the political battle over the South is about to get real.